Welcome back to the show. This week we're playing front of the car with trans coolers, uh, condensers, they're all finished up now looking awesome. The transmission, I've got it all cleaned up ready for paint, we'll show you what's happening there. The bonnet in front of me has been an absolute challenge and headache, almost ready with that as well, some really cool stuff going on with that. In Astral Design Extra, last week people commented about the blue car in the background, that's my neighbour's Summonats car. Check it out in Astro Line Extra, doing a shared skid last week, and following up from that will be top dress on the lawns. Thanks for joining. So I've spoken to you before about just the whole issue about a modified vehicle and the complexities and challenges that that raises in building. I mean, you can have the best plans ever and still have to redo things. So this bonnet's a good example where when the car came to me, the motor had really big air cleaners. The plan was to have them popping through the bonnet. As it worked out, the owner decided he'd prefer everything under the bonnet. So we worked with the engineer on that, came up with a way we could do that with the stack injection. And now I need to do stuff with the bonnet. So I'd made modifications to it that I'm now trying to turn back the clock with. But the thing is, with this sort of build, you just got to meet those challenges head on, take the time, get into it and make it happen. Most of the time I'm learning as I'm going anyhow, I've been doing it for 40 years, but every time you go to do something, there's something new to learn. So don't be frightened of it and um, give it your best shot. So back on making brackets and stuff, so we'd made these and I showed you those earlier. So now we've got to mount these little fellas here and the advice I get is that they really should sit off so they're not hard up against. So we're just making a bracket that's effectively going to box this whole thing in. And I'm just trying to make sure I minimise the amount of face I've got on that so we don't reduce the flow. So that'll then sit down in front of the radiator in that gap there. So it's all starting to take shape. This is not the actual radiator. This is the one for my panel van. So it's just filling in the job at the moment. So. We'll work on that, get that made up. So made those bottom bits up now, across here. So now we're just gonna trim these down. So we'll utilize those two bolt holes and we're gonna trim the rest out and then pop some holes through there to maximize our, our airflow. So these are the brackets to hold those coolers, the trans and the power steer cooler. So we're just welding some nuts in the back. We're a little bit restricted for room. So we're just gonna TIG weld those nuts on and that'll work a treat. So this is the final result, so the crazy part about all of this is that's all going to end up black so it'll all just end up fading into each other anyhow but it's looking really good, ended up opening up these holes, looks heaps better like that and then down the bottom these fittings here uh, will have a dash 6 AN style fitting so those hoses will run down and across up under the guard. So very happy with the way that's come up. Righto, so that's the done deal now. So they're bolted in. So we've nut inserted the radiator support panel. So I'll just have a couple of bolts through there. It's still a little bit flexible, more than I'd like. So I'm gonna put a, a spacer in there that'll fit just nicely for a bit more reinforcing. And then all these dash six lines will now run in behind and up. We've also got our um, electrical running through there and our air con. So we'll have the two from the engine coming around. So it's gonna get quite busy and then all of that will go around and then we've got our reservoirs over here. So the power steer and the trans will all run back and around up this side of the car. And this one here now, I've got a coat of epoxy on that. That's pretty much how that'll look, but it'll be painted in some black. And then the bolts I'm gonna do in black as well. And that's got the little arm fitted in it as well now. So it'll have the factory spring, but we've reversed all of that so it's underneath rather than sitting on top. And for our bolts, I talked a couple of weeks ago about the tops of the guards. We've actually been able to find these nice Ford licensed ones. They've actually got the Ford logo in the middle in stainless steel. So pretty pumped about those. So we'll be painting some and polishing some. So I've dragged this bonnet back out. I'm gonna give it the last final go. So it's all about having the patience and the want to get into it. So really just sorting out all of these areas we've welded up. They're just hammer and dolly and 
working both sides. So I've got that almost there now. As soon as I can get that sorted, I'll be able to combine the skin and the, the frame back together once we put a bit of primer on them and um, start setting that front end up properly. So this has been one of those jobs that you wish you never started. So we decided we'd fill in all the holes and gaps and make it all fit around those scoops and oh man, it's just been a nightmare. So I finally had enough. I spent a few more hours on the weekend just hammering and pushing metal around to a point now where I'm going to epoxy it and have another look at it then, start to put a skim in it. But the biggest issue with something like a bonnet is you really can't afford to have a massive amount of filler in it, otherwise the hinges will never hold it up. So it is what it is, and as far as I can take it at the moment, so I need to get it together because I can't do the guards, the front fenders, until I mount this. So I'm going to give it a squirt now and um, with some epoxy and on both sides and then we'll have a look and see what we're going to go from there. So I've got to admit that looks a lot better now. Not too bad at all. So the original plan with this car was these air cleaners wouldn't have stuck that far through, but they would have been up through the bonnet. So we put this skin through the, the English wheel and took out the ridges so that we could cut the holes through and not have the ridges in the way. So now we're not running these. So now the issue has come about that I've now got to, I'm not going to put the ridges back in, but I've got to overcome some of the issues that that's created in making it nice and flat. So when that's been rolled through here, it's now changed the shape through here, so I'm going to have to get in the back and push that out. And then I'm going to make this one big flat area through the top. But as you can see, there's some marks there from us pushing it around. And I've got this front looking pretty good now, so it had a major amount of damage. So I've just been pushing that around, a bit of filing, just a combination of hammers and dollies and bits and pieces. So I've got them lines there looking pretty sharp now and pretty good through here. So that one and that one. So I've just been doing that with a block of wood and using the sandbag. So if you ever got to sort of push metal around a fair bit, if you use these shop filled bags or sand filled leather bags, you can put that underneath so that when that holds the high and when you're hitting here, you can knock it down. So. What I've just decided to do now is this ridge that runs through here and goes all the way back, I'm going to make it more pronounced because I've got nothing back here now because this ridge is gone. I've got nothing to hold this back panel together. So I'm going to make that centre ridge run all the way to the back and a little bit more defined than normal just with a bolster from the back. So I'll just set up for that and we'll try and get a video of it, I think. Right, so we're going to put that crease in the bonnet. So I've got a couple of tools here. One two different bolsters. So these are not, you know, find them in the concrete department at Bunnings or your hardware store. And I've just made a nice radius on these for doing whatever I'm doing. This one's a little bit squarer than this one when I look at it. So depending on what the last job was would have been why I put that radius on there. And then rather than use the shot bag, I've put one of our leather welding blankets under here and I've got about eight thicknesses so that the panel's supported, but at the same time, the leather's gonna let it go in. So I'm just trying to put that factory style crease from here to here. And the reason for that is, is the factory lines used to come through here. So I've made the choice to not put those back in, but increase how, how I guess, how expressed that is. Normally it's quite narrow, almost disappears. So I'm gonna actually make it quite pronounced and that way I can then straighten from here to there and have a nice looking bonnet, I hope. So we'll just, um, just got to position it so it's nice and flat. Find a big hammer. And then I'm just going to work my way along. I've put a, a line here to work to. So I'm not trying to do it in one go. I 
I don't feel like that's doing much. And as I go up that curvature, I want a little bit less width in the chisel so I don't end up with little points on it. So that's done next to nothing. Righto, so we'll go again. We might need to get the big hammer. Or the leather bag, one or the other. Okay, let's lightly hit it with the big one. I can see that whole thing going, so I need to make it a bit more, need to go the leather bag or something. So we'll just reset up and go again. Right, so I've decided to try a bit of pine. So you'll see here, so that's really soft. So that's actually going in. So ideally, it should let the metal go into the pine. So we'll see what happens. Yep, that worked. Oh yeah. Just turn that over and let's have a look. So all I've got to do now is go along there enough times to make it nice and even and pronounced. All right, that's going to work. So now I've got that ridge in there. If you see there with that ruler, you can just see that there's a fair curve on that outer edge. And when I look in the middle here, it's pretty much straight. Well, it is straight. So what I plan to do now is go back on the leather bag rather than the timber and put a curve through there so that it matches and then I've got to then take these ridges out that we put in when we removed this ridge before when we're going to do the air cleaners because we I was just trying to get this bit flat because we're going to cut the holes in it so now I've got to go back and correct what I'd done before. So the gearbox is back from Precision so that's the one out of the, the FG six cylinder so it's an auto so that's been rebuilt now to handle the horsepower and um, I'm going to get that out and stick it on an engine stand so we can clean it up and prep it. So I've set the gearbox up on the engine stand so that I can prep it for paint. The issue here now is what to do with this casing. So I've had a little bit of an experimentation and this one here, the old speed all-purpose cleaner, is doing an awesome job. So I'll give it a clean with that with a little wire brush and then prep sole it and then um, probably once I've prep sold it I'll use the methyl mortar as well. Just make sure we get all the oils and stuff off it and then we'll be able to work out what colour we're going to paint that. Righto, so gearbox is all clean so we degreased it with the mother's product and then went over to uh, prep sole. So now that I get it in the booth I'll prep sole it again, hit it with methyl mortar, make sure all those oils, handprints, whatever else is on it are gone and then shoot it with some of the old Vibrance epoxy. So this stuff's very versatile. Um, there's some heat here, but not too much. It will handle that fine. And then I'll make a decision on um, exactly what color we're gonna paint it. And it'll probably go a matte clear once I've got worked out what color it'll be. But Chris went up to Camden and got me some um, golf course sand, so it's pretty much what they use on the tees um, that they supply. So he's got a little tipper, went up there and got a load for me. So now we're just spreading that out. So this is how I've always done it. it reminds me a bit of Broken Hill with the red sand. So this is out of the Neoprene River, so nice and clean and out of fresh water. So 
so you don't get any salt build up and hoping to get it down before that cloud turns to rain. So there I am on my hands and knees. So I find this the best way, just a nice straight edge, get it all relatively fat first and drag the straight edge over, pull it all in, and then when it dries, I'll sort of run a broom over it and then wash it in. So that'll flatten her up. That's looking good now, broom that in, put a bit of water on it. I was hoping to get some rain, but it didn't rain. So I've give that a hose and hopefully we'll get some rain tonight. So looking pretty good and it won't be long and we'll have the mower on there sorting it out. So with this bottom bit, as well as the lawn, ended up putting the full load on the front, so two and a half tonne, and that's from the Neopene River. Nice fresh water sand. So we ended up getting lucky. We ended up having that um, rain overnight. I mean, Thursday night, so we had 50 mil, which was really special. So that washed most of that sand in. So the only areas where you're seeing patches there now is where the it's trying to fill up a few lows. So I've already given it a mow, believe it or not. And I'm gonna spray for that clover now, which I still haven't managed to get done. So I'm gonna spray for the clover, hopefully tonight. And then I'll be mowing that again in another couple of days. So this is the one we're gonna try, see if that'll get rid of that clover, the little tiny clover. If that doesn't work, he's got another one apparently. This one's probably the softest on the rest of the lawn. So we'll see how it goes and um, I'll keep you posted. Right, so this is the finished job. So, got it all made up, bolted up now. So, we've got some nut certs in the radiator support panel. And then these lines here will now all come around and they'll work their way back around to the, um, the thingies. 